All right. Dr. Jeff, it's good to have you here. Pastor Paul, great and, to be here. Uh, we are continuing our Choices series, and today our subject matter is kindness, be kind, which is really important. I don't, I don't know that we think about being <laughs> right, kind very right, often, right. you know. Um, but but I want to jump into this uh, with you. D do you consider yourself to be naturally a kind person? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Making sure that's loud and clear. I, I don't consider okay. myself to be kind. I think, um, I'm not sure if you're like familiar with the Enneagram, but I'm a mm -hmm. four on the Enneagram. Okay. So I tend to be very self-reflective, mm -hmm. which can lead to obsessing over m myself. Oh, wow. And, um, and so I'm not others focused like a two mm -hmm. would consider themselves to be kind because they're always helping other people. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, I, I don't think that's naturally there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'll, I'll hear people say, well, this is really funny because, um, pastor Amy was telling pastor Mike that, um, you know, we're gonna be doing kindness this week. So I think I'm just going to get Jeff to come in. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So she, she said, well, I didn't hear her say that, yeah, yeah. but Pastor Mike was saying that to me. We're laughing about it. You know, we're kind of joking about it. So I think, you know, I've heard my wife say this. My kids have said it. You know, mm. you're so kind. Or, and I'm like, oh, hmm. I know what's going on. I know what's going on inside. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't feel that naturally that I am like I have I don't have a proclivity mm -hmm. towards kindness. Yeah. Um, if it's there, I have to, I have to work toward it. Okay. W w was there a particular point in your life that, you know, I know you're a minister, I know you're, you're a pastor and, and, and an educator, um, but it, was there a, a moment where you felt, okay, this is important enough for me, you know, to, to work on? Because I, there's, especially I think in, in our culture now, and I could be generalizing a little bit where we almost kind of feel like kindness is, um, a payment to other people for being kind to us. Yeah, and, like it's know, that. Um, so, so we don't. We, the we don't, client benefactor relationship that. Right. Yeah. So, was there a point for you to where you felt okay? This is important enough for me to to fight for to intentionalize in your life. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. It's a really good question. I'm thinking of two moments. Mm -hmm. You know, when it happened for me, and I would say. When I said when it happened for me, but two moments where I realized the need mm -hmm. to be intentional with it. And I would say the, the first one was when I was a junior in college and I had a, I laid down to take a nap and I had like a night terror or a mm -hmm. day terror mm -hmm. where I felt like I had gone, already gone to eternity and my life was over. Wow. And I, at the time I was not really a committed Christian. I was just kind of like, ah, uh, and I remember just begging and crying mm. God I was in a fetal position I was like God let me go back and I'll do it I'll do it better Wow I'll not be so mm -hmm. self-absorbed and I'll be more others focused and I was wow. begging and pleading and I kept feeling like there was this this voice that was saying that time's done mm -hmm. you will live throughout eternity with how you manage time it's oh time's over yeah you can't go back to it and I was weeping and crying and I woke up it's frightening in the middle of the afternoon in a fetal position, begging God to let me go back. Mm. And I like, okay, I'm going to do some things different. So I, it started there. And I would say the second movement for me was when I really got into the beloved disciple. And there was that, the first episode of the beloved disciple where he, Jesus says, someone's about to betray me. Mm. And everybody is like, who is it? Who is it? Mm. And it says, but there was one disciple who leaned on Jesus's mm -hmm. side. And it was like, he recognized the hurting person. Mm. Nobody else, they're either self-justifying or blame-shifting, mm -hmm. but he is recognizing someone's hurting, and it's Jesus. Yeah. And so he leans in. And I remember saying when I saw that, I was like, I want to do that for people. Mm. I, wanna, I want to listen with intentionality mm -hmm. to someone and give witness to their pain and their suffering. Mm. So I became more intentional at that, in that season mm. of my life. But you know, like it is with anything, Pastor mm. Paul, it's, there's drift. Mm -hmm. We go along and we drift away from, you know, and I feel like I've been busy and hectic and things are going on mm -hmm. and I've drifted mm -hmm. away from that. And, you know, it was just a grace. I feel like it was a grace of God for Pastor Amy to ask me to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was God calling me back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just like you're, you're, you've drifted. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like really, really, really appreciative, yeah. when I'm, which I shared in the sermon about the dream that I had. Mm -hmm. And on Friday night, 
here in Dallas. And so I just, there's a call that's, that's kind of stirring me like mm-hmm. you've drifted and it's time for you to be very intentional yeah. with kindness. Yeah. You, you know, you made a note, uh, in, in the service, uh, and I, I didn't expect it, but it was so profound where, where in kindness, the Lord is teaching you how to be human, but, but you're so right. It's it, the reason Jesus came mm-hmm. was to fix something, mm-hmm. right? Not to just start a new movement because you're right there. There are so many people who believe like we believe in, in, in essence, but our character may not line up with the actual image of God. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. There's one of the church fathers, and I think it's Basil the Great, that said, so many times we're told that God, that Jesus came to show us what God was like. Mm. Right? True. Mm-hmm. Basil said, Jesus came to show us how to be human because we didn't know. Mm. Because that's what was lost. That's what, was, that's was what we lost. needed. Yeah. We don't need yeah. to be like God. Our problem was we thought we were like God. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's the garden. Yeah. You know, and so, but we, we just didn't know how to be human. Mm. And so I, I think there's something to well, looking at Jesus and going, this is what a human's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Don't make this about a religion. Yeah. This is just what a human's supposed to be. Wow. All humans are supposed to be like yeah. this. Yeah. So, so intentionality. You know, I, um, I, I love the way you prepared for this. Uh, is is actually walking this thing out and and uh, and the challenge to those who are watching and the people who are in sanctuary to do something about it. How important is intentionality? Can someone just wake up and say, "I'm going to be kind"? I'm sure there are some people out there that can mm-hmm. do that. I'm not one of them. Okay, <laughs> I I, just, I know myself. Mm-hmm. I'm so busy. I've got so much going mm-hmm. on. And then when I do have a spare moment, I'm not thinking about other people. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about. I wonder how the Giants are doing. Mm-hmm. I wonder how, not the Cowboys, but yeah, <laughs> um, whoever. I, but my mind just kind of goes, well, this would relax mm-hmm. me if I would like, what any other. And I think if I don't calendar it, mm-hmm. if it's not in my calendar, it's not going to get done. Yeah. And intentionality, the Hebrew word kavana, is such a strategic part mm. of one's faith that if you aren't, in, if you're not intentional with it, it's not going to happen. Mm. And so. I think it's that, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Sunday, I'm going to take someone out to lunch. Or, yeah. And it doesn't even that big of a deal. It's like, I'm just going to call somebody and tell them how much I love them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could start small. And then, but I, it, my experience, especially in the world that we live in with mm-hmm. our, we're oversaturated with noise. Yeah. Like there's so much vying for our mm-hmm. attention that if we don't have an intention, if it's not on a calendar, it's not going to get done. Yeah. And I think we do calendar our, you know, many of us that have a walk with God, we may calendar our, our prayer mm-hmm. in the morning. It's like, I'm going to get up. And pr- so we do that. Mm-hmm. So why not add to it? Yeah. You know, and I remember I was telling about dropping the, the thank my Thanksgiving cards mm-hmm. in the mail. I dropped them in the mailbox. I had to walk to it. So I walked to it, dropped them in. I'm walking back. And I remember I was walking back. And like I said, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I am kind. Like I was walking back, and I, as I was walking back, I just started going, God, and I worship you mm. because I'm not a kind person. Mm. I know it. Like if it wasn't for you working in me, yeah, I'm I'm more selfish than the next mm. than anyone. So it was a way for me to even turn it into like a worshiping moment. Right. Wow. You know. So I, just as we're talking, I'm seeing the sacrifice in kindness because it kind of requires you to die a little bit to yourself mm-hmm. because we are naturally selfish and we think about ourselves more. And for us to think about someone else and to be Christ-like, mm-hmm. it requires giving up something. Mm-hmm. And that usually is sometimes our own comfort yeah. because in order to be kind, sometimes we have to put ourselves yep. in yep. positions. You know, I, I, I think uh, the last week, you know, we on a Zoom call, we talked, you were talking about finding someone who you can just, snip the grass or something, you know? Yes, yes. Which I don't know that that's something natural that you would... No, I'm not a grass snipper. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what would you say to the person? And my wife and I, we were talking about this. One of the most unkind places I think nowadays is that there. it's in the, the social media uh, comments. It's where people would say things they normally wouldn't say, do things they wouldn't normally do in, in public or to the person's face. Um, but, but we all still want kindness, but there's almost a, a freedom to feel like you can be unkind. Um, and, and then in confronting, I'm not saying we should confront people like that, in that on that medium, but 
there is an idea of this. Maybe this is just the way I am. What do you say to the people that says, "Well, this is just the way I am. Um, I would love to be kind, but I wasn't raised that way. I wasn't, you know." Um, is there any encouragement that you can give to them, or or yeah. freedom from the stuckness <laughs> you know, of, of <laughs> unkind? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd pull if somebody said it to me, I just pull the doctor feel thing. You know, <laughs> so, how's that working for you? Ah, uh, yeah. I, you know, if it's working for you, not being kind, then man, it's. it's a do your thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not going to try to convince you, but I, I mean, I could share how it's impacting my life and yeah. the difference that it's making, but I certainly wouldn't try to. But I do think, uh, Pastor Paul, you bring up an important point on social media mm -hmm. because if, by and large, how that platform is used, mm -hmm. it creates a lot of, especially... Like they're telling us now, the Surgeon General mm -hmm. and then Professor uh, Laura Santos from Yale mm -hmm. said that the number one crisis in America mm -hmm. is the mental health of young adults. Wow. And it's all around social media. Mm. And so they look on social media. There's this report that just came out in January. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. But like they're isolating themselves. Like just went on this whole thing. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they get on social media and people have a better car, a better life, a better mm -hmm. this, and people are bragging about whatever it is that they have, and they start feeling worse about themselves. Yeah. And so I, you're bringing up something good, and I think you know something might be interesting here that mm -hmm. we could do, and that would be giving a shout out mm -hmm. to people that you normally, like if it's your wife, of course you're supposed to give a shout yeah. out, <laughs> or your kid, but giving a shout out to someone that doesn't normally get a shout out mm. of like, I just want to shout out so-and-so and I'm going to tag them because this person inspires me in this way. And I just want the world to know wow. I'm a fan of this person. Wow. Yeah. And not because this person has 1 million followers, mm -hmm. right. but because this person may have a hundred or 50 or something. Yeah. And it's just like, I noticed this person and what a kind act mm. that would be to then use this platform in a way right. that's redemptive. Right. Wow. That's awesome. That's a great idea, actually. That's usually how the 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 the, the trends happen, you know. And, yeah. And it has to be intentional. It's a way of life for me going forward. Okay. I feel it that strongly. Like it's going to be on Sunday. I'm going to sit mm -hmm. down. I'm going to calendar. You know, I'm going to do this, this, and I'll probably use like what what everybody has. Mm -hmm. I'll probably use these same challenges here. Yeah. And uh, go through all of them. Just awesome. thankful Thursday, forgiving Friday. Mm -hmm. I did that Friday. It's just a reminder that this is how I want to live. Yeah. And you know, I, like, I really, I really want to be like Jesus. Yeah. I really do. And I, and I've got so long to go. Yeah. And that's why I'm feeling like a little bit anxious about oh. it. I'm like, dear God. <laughs> so not in the sense that I feel like God's upset with me. I don't feel, I feel nothing but love yeah. and grace, but I just, I want to live in a healthy way mm. into that. That's good. So I would say that the, the impact that it has had on me uh, has, has been like, it's definitely gonna be something that goes in my calendar. Amen. Yeah,